When you're thinking about stress or anxiety, um, it's it's probably the starting place is more in your body, like a somatic thing where you would want to, you know, start with a sort of mindfulness. Um, like if it's immediately something that's happening right then and there, right? Like an acute response and you're having anxiety or a stressor, um, your body's already like supercharged, right? It's like upregulated and the mindfulness uh, like factor just sort of like deep breaths and maybe square breathing, which is like four seconds of inhale, hold for four seconds, four seconds of exhale, hold for four seconds. You know, even drawing that square in the air with your finger while you do the square breathing, anything to sort of decrease your level of agitation and just sort of relax your body. Um, so deep breaths, you know, a lot of people a lot of people, when they think of um, decreasing stress or anxiety, their, their first, you know, go-to is like mindfulness. Okay, what is that? That's what yoga, meditation, you know, this aspect of like um, kind of the perfect solution is, is to watch your thoughts. And um, mindfulness can really be any version of that, right? So you could be taking a walk, you could be doing the dishes, you could be even fuzzy brain time, right? Watching television on some level. If you're in the present moment, if you're able to sort of step outside of that thinking, 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 all that excessive worry, um, it's, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to have practiced some present moment and some mindfulness. So that's, that's helpful for your thoughts, you know, your thoughts as well as just like if you can relax your body and on the same page, you can bring your thinking into a little bit less of excessive worry and a little bit less of stress. I think meaning is really important with, with that aspect of um, reducing your anxiety or stress. Uh, to have something with meaning that you like to do is different from having something that is just kind of empty or hollow, you know? So if you're like, okay, I'm gonna learn to play chess, but you hate playing chess, that's not gonna be a way to reduce your stress or anxiety. But if you love taking hikes, Vermont's a beautiful state, there's a lot of beautiful places to take a hike, you know, that that's gonna open an entire uh, vista of um, stress and anxiety reducing activities if you will so really finding the thing that that creates that sense of of, of, of attachment of belong something that you could um kind of grab even when you're not for example feeling like you uh can like if you're if you're really anxious you might actually if you're really anxious you might have a harder time deciding to do anything right you may be kind of paralyzed in that constant worry and excessive analysis what am i going to do what's next you know so if you get kind of practiced and there's something that you just you know for for, for lack of a better word enjoy um, or if it's a meaningful activity then you might actually engage in it and do it when you're stressed and anxious in a way that you wouldn't if it was just something you kind of had to force right when i'm feeling bad i don't want to do something that's already hard for me like mentally or otherwise it's hard for me don't want to do it when i'm not feeling good it's human you know we're, we're social animals we we need that connection and and all too often isolation is part of our sort of depressions or anxieties or stress comes from just being alone um so to to you know in that regard um if you can find something of that kind of like meaningful activity that we were talking about that also uh, meets that need of having like a social uh, connection or component or some sort of like um, charge that's uh, not just, you know, uh, you in a void or a vacuum kind of thing. So, and that's really difficult after COVID, you know, we've had this period of time where um, it's been intensive to have like isolating periods either during actual shutdowns or, or you know, or um, later on um, just kind of getting back and used to things. So I think for a lot of people feeling the benefits of, of being social, feeling the benefits of having uh, healthy relationships is actually as much of a stress reducer as you know um a mindfulness practice and or so whether you find that in your community or you find that uh online or you find that you know in in the world of uh sports or you know wh wherever it is that sort of like 
jazzes up the uh, you know ability to uh, connect with other people on something you both you all you know uh, like love whatever if you've ever had a conversation with a friend uh, you know someone in your family uh, on the day that you're feeling anxious about a, a job interview or you know anxious about um, a kiddo that's sick or, or anxious about um, you know uh, an imminent uh, uh, plain you know whatever it is that's that is anxiety producing um when we talk to our family or we talk to friends we you know we it decreases that need uh to uh it decreases our stress um which can go back right can go back to sort of that body and somatic you know that that part about your thinking that can be part of where you stress when you've got um you know a family member or, or a community member someone you're talking to um, it's also that your actual, you know, core self, your body is is relaxing and, and sort of the, I mean, not to be too technical, but your cortisol, you know, everything's kind of going down, your adrenaline's less, you know, and, and so you're able, you're able to sort of relax into your, to your body is, and your thoughts kind of follow. You know, in mental health, we talk a lot about uh, CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, and they've got this idea, and it's it's pretty scientific at this point that you know your thoughts, your feelings, uh, your behaviors, those are things that follow. So there's kind of like they call it the CBT triangle. So if you can change the way you're thinking, it's often going to have an effect on like kind of what you do, or or even more, um, you know how you feel. So, or or if you're in a great mood and you're thinking lots of positive thoughts, you're gonna you're gonna do that uh, difficult, harder thing that you were uh, hoping to do at some point. Uh, or you know if you're feeling very anxious and stressed out, uh, but you do a, a mindfulness activity um, and uh, you uh, start thinking about uh, all the things you have to be grateful for. Um, that's another version of like, you know, kind of balancing the system, if you will. Uh, and to uh, tie that back to the idea of community, um, you know, it's it's the it's the people we talk to that sort of input the the thoughts and the the context. Uh, you know, our experiences. If we can get the perspective of a friend or a, even a provider, right? Like a, a therapist, the place where um, you know it's it is a, another place where you can sort of have a, a positive, healthy connection with another human being at the same time, maybe gain or yourself find some aha moments and perspectives uh, that can sort of be um, uh, useful for, uh, you know, managing and, and reducing stress. You reduce your, your anxiety, your stress, let's say. Um, you know, you've done the mindfulness exercise, everything I was kind of talking about. Um, it, it doesn't mean that you'll never have a stressful event ever, you know, uh, occur in your life again. I mean, I think that your anxiety level, you know, it's, there's a difference for everybody. There's a little bit of a variant variable of like where your baseline is for uh, anxiety. So some people will struggle a little bit more and you can kind of take it to this place where like, yeah, it's, it's more of a generalized anxiety, right? So generalized anxiety disorder is an actual mental health issue that we, that we work with a lot. Um, but it's not untrue to say that everybody has anxiety, right? There's a, there's a helpful part and this is kind of a canned speech, but you know, we need to be able to get out of the way of the saber tooth tiger or the oncoming bus um even our alarm clock going off in the morning right that's a, a signal a cue that we have anxiety uh that we need to follow that stressor uh to be able to get up and go to work etc um so uh anxiety is very good at survival in the sense that um when you've sort of quote taken care of or managed one uh episode or, or just you know as your anxiety has gone up around something else and then over time you know it decreases uh there's always that other uh element and i think in a more clinical or in a way of thinking of it in sort of a, a manage managing a uh, care uh, or when anxiety levels are sort of too high kind of disproportionate so oftentimes you get a stressor and you feel it's worse like your anxiety is more than it, uh, it would be for maybe someone else experiencing the same thing um given that you know uh again you not to feel any kind of uh, guilt or remorse that like your anxiety does come back up right and it, it globs on to the next stressor so you have kind of this let's say like a pool of water or a well full of like 
how much uh, anxiety you have in general, um, and it, it, it's easy enough um, that it, that that anxiety, uh, that water will sort of flow into the next thing that you're anxious about. So, kind of exposing yourself every once in a while to something that's challenging that 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 you maybe, you know, kind of in your heart of hearts, um, you know, you can do, but when you sort of uh, just think about it at at first glance, it'd be uh, a challenge that you wouldn't take on. It's not something you would want to do. Um, but it's got this element of if you go ahead and, you know, climb the mountain you didn't think you could climb, um, you're going to feel accomplished. You're going to sort of have reached a peak or a pinnacle uh, that wasn't accessible before. But and what we know is that that makes you more likely to be able to uh, take on that kind of challenge again. So uh, sometimes they call this exposure um, therapy or, you know, it doesn't have to be therapy. It's just you're exposing yourself to some stressor that is... Um, you're, you're giving yourself an opportunity at that point to practice, to practice things that are hard and, you know, to, to, to work on mental health or, or to increase resilience to anxiety, stress, etc. cetera. Um, we do need to, uh, we definitely benefit from doing hard things. Like we definitely benefit from doing things that are just a little bit past our comfort zone or just a little bit harder. Uh, than we really think is even possible sometimes, as long as it's safe, as long as it's not something that threatens your well-being overall, right? None of us should just jump off the cliff without a bungee. Um, but it is something about uh, exposure. It, you know, there's there's a benefit to that. <laughs>